Hey guys, Matt Scott here again with another very exciting tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on EDS 8.2's brand new tracker, which is built into the mask filter that you'll find in you know earlier versions of EDS. However, now the mask filter is even more powerful, and I'm super excited to start um, playing with it and show you guys how to use it and get the most from it. So, um, in the previous tutorial, make sure you check out EDS World. I went into great detail um, talking about the primary color correction filter, which is another filter uh, added to EDIUS 8.2. Definitely check that out. It's an awesome tool and we're going to be using it in conjunction with the mask a lot today. And um, what these two new filters add to EDIUS, again, is speed. And that's one huge advantage of EDIUS over any other editor is the ability to work quickly, um, the ability to work in the same piece of software without leaving that piece of software, all in 10-bit, in full resolution. Uh, so these things are, are hugely advantageous when using software like EDIUS, especially the latest version of EDIUS 8.2. So let's go ahead and get started um, and just talk about how I would use the mask, um, especially in conjunction with this primary color correction tool. So let's go ahead and fix up these log images and uh, we're gonna do that using the color correction filter. So we'll go to video, filters, color correction, go down to the primary color corrector which is brand new to EDIUS 8.2. Again, check out that in-depth tutorial at EDIUS World um, because we will be going over this a little bit quicker than usual. So if we double click on the primary color corrector now, uh, this new dialog box comes up and uh, what we can do very quickly, very easily, is go down to the RGB curves, grab the shadow point and just pull it down and as you can see the image instantly, instantly looks a lot better because what we're doing is we're adding the contrast back in from the log recorded image. And I'm just playing with these points a little bit. I'm just getting the image to look a lot nicer. And uh, we're also gonna add some saturation here. I generally like to go from a log image around 45, but you can experiment with that yourself. And uh, let's just scroll up to the top page, the white balance area. And I can see straight away that this image is a little bit warm. I've shot this and that the wrong white balance. So we're just gonna cool that off using the white balance temperature slider and things are looking much better straight away. So we can go ahead and press okay. And as you can see very quickly, we've graded that log image and um, we can just see the difference here before and after. Remember this is happening in 10 bit full resolution real time. And um, we're doing that using the new uh, primary color correction tool, which is very fast, very efficient. We can always go back in there just um, push out mids down a little bit more as well. Okay, so primary color correction, that's exactly why it's called primary color correction, is uh, it's basically an overall color correction that is gonna fix a log image. But once we've actually corrected the image, how do we take it a step further? How do we add focus to the image? So with composition and depth of field, you can see we already have focus with this image. We've already created depth um, by using a foreground element here, which is Rob Benici, a good friend of mine, good adventure buddy, and um, he's checking his GPS on top of a mountain, okay? And we can see that he's out of focus and the trees are in focus. So it gives us a good sense of depth here. But what if we want to sort of take that a step further and add even more focus or more drama to this shot? Well, that's where we can use something like a secondary color corrector or something like a mask to help us specify a range of color or sharpness or brightness. Um, to different parts of the image. So I'm just gonna switch from dual view here um, into single view. So if you go up to view, and I just change that to single mode, that way we're just gonna get a bigger picture to work with. And um, now I'm gonna go to effects, and I'm gonna go to video filters and the mask. So let's drop the mask on here. Now remembering that, you know, the mask tool is nothing really new to Edis. It's been around for the last uh, few generations, and it works very, very well. So typically speaking, this is how I would use a mask, right? So I'm just gonna zoom out the properties here of this so to 15%, so I've got a smaller image to work with. And uh, the mask tool allows us to draw certain shapes. So I could draw a square, for example, or a circle or an oval. And I can even draw a custom shape using um, Bezier points. And um, the beauty of this mask tool is I can then place filters on the inside or the outside of the mask. I can also soften the edge of the mask and I can also lower opacity of things inside and outside of the mask, as you can see here. So it's a very powerful tool. Now, like I said, typically what I would do to this shot is um, you know, maybe just grab this pen tool and draw this huge gradient like this, just to shape a triangle, and soften the edge by quite a lot, maybe 1500 pixels if my project allows me to soften it by that much. And then on the inside of that filter, I'm going to add, say, for example, maybe a three-way color corrector. So I'll just go to my filters here, three-way color corrector. Notice we're on the inside filter section here. Then I'm going to go and open the properties for that filter. 
And if you watch over here on the right hand side, you're going to be able to see the changes that I'm making. So for example, now what I'm going to do is go to the midtones or the gray balance wheel and just push orange into it. Now obviously I've gone too far with that, but you can see that our, our mask is only allowing that filter to enter the area of the mask, basically only happen on the inside of the mask, keeping in mind that we have softened the mask by 804 pixels. Um, so that's why you have this gradient or this gradual effect going from the strongest part of the mask at 100% and then fading out as it gets to the bottom right hand corner based on the shape that we've created. So uh, let's just back that off a little bit and just make it a little bit uh, nicer. I'm also going to go to the contrast adjustment and increase that and just brighten things up a little bit. Take it away from green, sort of add a bit more orange into it. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and press OK. And what about the outside of the mask? So instead of drawing an opposing shape, Edius has already set the mask up to work for us. So what we can do is enable a filter on the outside mask and then open a select filter dialog. Go to effects, video effects, color correction, three-way color correction again. And I'm going to open the dialog box for that three-way color corrector. So now what I'm doing is actually playing with the other side of the mask, the outside mask. And what I'm going to do is just add the opposite color of orange and just use some complementary colors here and just push a little blue into that corner. I'm also going to darken the corner and crush the blacks in the corner as well. Just add a lot more contrast down here. So what I'm trying to do is add this sort of vibe or add this extra dimension to this shot, sort of suggesting that maybe the sun is behind a big cloud here and the sun is creeping into the left, but it's in shadow on the right hand side. So what we've effectively done um, to the right hand side is just cooled it off and dropped the saturation a little bit and dropped the brightness. So now you've got this extra sort of layer and if we turn the mask on and off, you know, things are looking pretty cool. We've sort of added a whole new dimension um, to this clip and we could definitely refine that, do a better job. But that's typically what I would use a mask for. And um, even though we haven't used any of the new mask's features just yet, uh, it's still such a powerful tool and it always has been. But let's take this another step further. I'm going to delete this clip and let's have a look at some of the mask's new features. All right, so let's grab this clip here. And again, you'll be able to download these clips from the blog. I'll sort of tell you how to do that in a minute. But here's another clip shot, same camera, same day. Um, I recorded this or debated this out from RAW into um, Canon's log format. So if you have a quick look at our scopes, you can see that it's lacking contrast here. There's no real black point here. Um, so we can go ahead and fix that by going Effect, Color Correction, Primary Color Corrector, drop that on here. Go to the Primary Color Corrector, scroll down to the bottom and just push the, the shadows down to add some contrast. So instantly, you know, things are looking better there. We can also increase our highlights a little bit and we can play with our mid-tones. So contrast-wise, things are looking pretty good. However, the white balance definitely needs to be fixed and we can just check that by uh, opening the scopes here and having a look at our vector scope. Our vector scope definitely suggests that there's a whole lot of yellow and red in this image. Um, you know, his t-shirt's supposed to be blue. The background's not supposed to be sort of a yellowy green, that's supposed to be a bluey green, right? So let's go ahead and fix the white balance. Let's double click our primary color corrector and we'll go to the white balance. So we've already adjusted contrast using a curve. Now we're going to scroll up to the white balance slider and you know what's the opposite color of yellow and red? As you can see here on the temperature slider on white balance, the opposite color is blue. So we can slide that just gently to the left and as you can see, instantly the white balance is fixed. The image is looking a lot nicer just visually looking at it. But also you'll notice that the scopes are representing a much more balanced shot as the colors go to the center of our vector scope. So things are looking pretty good there. Uh, we could also increase saturation a little bit. Again, not too much, maybe about 20 is looking pretty good. And as we do that, I might actually drop the white balance a little even more into the blue. And that's looking pretty great. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. So remember, this is all about speed. Um, we're grading a log image here, and things are looking much better. Maybe you could do with a little bit more saturation, but um, I'll go into that in a lot more detail in the previous tutorial. So again, let's go ahead and have a look at this mask and how we can use the mask. I'm going to go to Effect, Video Filters, Mask, and drop the mask on here. And now again, what we can do, instead of drawing a huge shape and adding a gradient, this time I'm just going to draw a simple oval shape and I'm just going to reposition that, use the rotation values and just reposition the mask over uh, Rob's face here and then what I'm going to do is soften the edge of the mask again by quite a lot, maybe 800 pixels and then on the inside of the mask I can start to add filters and maybe 
brighten up this image a little bit. So for example, I can open up my filter dialog box, go to filters, color correction. Again, let's use a three-way color corrector and open up the dialog box for that. And then I can just gently increase the brightness of the midtones. And what we're doing is adding focus to an area of the image. So as we add or increase the midtones of the, the image, uh, maybe we want to lower the black points of the image just to make sure that the, the black around his eyes and, and things like that still have nice contrast. So this is a really nice, great way to sort of gently relight someone's face. And as you can see, um, the difference, as subtle as it may have seemed, is quite huge. And that allows us, as a viewer, to, you know, have less to do. Our brain has less to do when it looks at this image. It instantly wants to find someone's eyes. And we're helping the viewer be guided to exactly where we want them to look by creating focus. And to do that, we're using a mask. And this is the ultimate power of the mask. However, let's go ahead and press OK. And I just want to show you a problem that we've run into. So now I've got this beautiful uh, mask here. I can turn that filter on and off. But what happens if the image moves, say, over here? Now let's have a look at our mask and where it is. It's not on his face anymore, and that's because it's, we weren't working with a still image to begin with. We're working with motion. And um, of course, you know that, right? So how do we track that? Well, in the past, what I would have had to do is enable keyframes for that mask. So for example, I would go to Shape 1, Enable Keyframes. So now I've added a keyframe right here, and the keyframes have stored all the information, like the anchor point, the position, the scale, etc. And um, then I'm going to scrub back in time to the point where the mask is not on his face. And then I just manually move it over here. So now we've created keyframes. And between those keyframes, the mask can be animated to stay on Rob's face. Now, I'm not saying that that's extremely difficult, but it can be cumbersome sometimes. And, um, you know, it's just an extra layer of work that I have to do to try and track this mask to make sure it stays precisely where I want it to stay. And then we have to watch it back and make sure that things are okay and maybe I need to change the size and the rotation. So what I've done there is effectively um, created focus on Rob's face and no matter where he moves, that mask stays on his face. But we had to do that manually. So let's go ahead and delete all those manual keyframes and let's show you the new raw power of Edius 8.2's tracker. It's absolutely amazing. Check this out. I'm going to place the mask on Rob's face. Uh, we don't even need to add keyframes here, so we can delete those, right? So I've got a mask here. I've got a filter inside the mask. You can see that happening. And all I'm going to do now is see this tracking section. Um, we have a number of sort of buttons here on this tracking section. Um, the double backward and forward buttons is like an automatic track forward. And in this instance, here's our timeline cursor. Here's the mask. This is the area we want to track. What I'm going to do now is just press the double forward track forward button and check this out. In real time, or pretty much real time, Edis is tracking the features of this image and making sure the mask stays on it. Check it out. And all of these keyframes have been added into this tracking data. This is so awesome. And uh, let's just go ahead back to this point where we started the track. And now what I'm going to do is track backwards. Click the double arrows. And we're just paying attention over here in the left-hand side window, making sure the tracker is doing a good job. And as you can see, it's doing an awesome job. So what we've just done effectively is just automatically tracked um, our focus mask. And it's just happened so quickly. But as you can see, it's just not perfect because here it is right on Rob's face. But maybe I just want to refine this a little bit. And I'll show you how easy that is now. So uh, we, we probably don't have to refine this, but just because we're picky and I just want to show you some of the features of this new tracker tool and how easy it is, I'm going to go to the section where the mask is still on Rob's face just before it sort of drops off there. And basically what I want to do is move that over to the left a little bit, or maybe even shrink it a little bit. So what we'll do is go back here, and I'm just going to resize it a smidge. And now you can see a keyframe has popped up there. And then I'm going to reverse back here, reposition, rotate, and check it out. Now, in conjunction with our tracking data, we have our own additional keyframes. So now we've got this perfect mask. Let's just go back to the beginning and just adjust that very slightly. Now we've got this perfectly tracked mask. This happens so quickly, so easily. Let's go ahead and press OK and have a look at that happen in real, real time. Again, let's have a look at the difference before and after. It's very subtle. 
but this just opens up a whole new world of color correction, um, especially because it saves us so much time. So these two new filters are just huge updates for Edius. Very, very exciting stuff. Let's go ahead and have a look at another use. Uh, remember, you can download all these clips. I may as well show you now, actually. If you go to the web, the World Wide Web, go to www.mattscottvisuals.com, um, and up the very top of the page here, um, I have a whole bunch of resources that are all free, but go to the download section. And in the download section, you'll find a whole bunch of free clips. Some of them are shot on RED camera, some of them Sony A7S, some of them uh, Magic Lantern. There's all different formats and file sizes or file types in there. And they're all sort of designed for you to play with and learn how to color grade uh, along with my tutorials. So go ahead and download those. We'll be playing with this clip as well a little bit later on in this tutorial. And um, obviously all the clips that I'm just playing with right now, you can grab and have a look at those. I've also created presets too, which we're going to get into in a second. So I urge you to go and have a play with those. But let's get back into the tutorial now. And um, what I'm going to do is have a look at this particular shot. We need to fix the aspect ratio for this clip because I shot this on the Sony F55, um, which has a 16 by 9 sensor, and I was using two times anamorphic glass, or a lens in front of the camera that actually squishes the image um, by a factor of two to one. So what we need to do, and that's, um, you know, what that does is creates a very cinematic look, creates oval shaped bokeh, and um, a whole bunch of other things that beautiful things happen with anamorphic glass. But what we need to do now is actually correct the anamorphic squish. So to do that, we're gonna click on the clip itself, Go to the Information tab, and let's double-click the Layout tool. So I've done many tutorials on the layout. I urge you to go and check those out at Edius World as well. There's a lot of good resources there, not just my tutorials. There's a whole bunch there. And um, we talk about how to use the Layout tool, what it's designed to do. Um, basically, you can resize and reposition and animate anything um, on your timeline, and you can do that in 3D space. It's such a powerful tool, um, but in this instance, all we're going to do is just correct this aspect ratio. So we're going to go to the stretch values of this clip, and we're going to untick preserve frame aspect, because uh, we specifically don't want to preserve the aspect ratio, we want to distort it. And what I'm going to do is go to the X value, and if you click on this X value here and push your mouse up, you can see we can stretch it out, right? So we can just do this manually until we think the image looks correct. But technically speaking, um, we really should just use the numbers, right? So instead of using our eye, we're just going to type a number here, and we're going to make the X value 150%, and we're going to make the Y value 75%. And that's giving us a very precise, um, mathematically accurate de-squish. So we're not going to get any distortion with circles or anything like that. So that's exactly how this image is supposed to look. You to position this image um, like this, because this is the framing that I framed for and I think it works really well. But anyway, so what we've done is we've stretched the X and the Y in different proportions, unticking this preserved frame aspect ratio. But there's one more cool feature that we just quickly go over, and that's the resampling method. Whenever you change the size of anything in EDIUS, it uses um, a certain resizing algorithm. Again, I've spoken about this in other tutorials. But if we just go down to the Lancos 3 high quality, it's just going to give you a much, much nicer quality de-squeeze. Let's go ahead and press OK and um, let's just quickly play this shot back and have a look at what we're working with here. Right, so again this was shot um, in, in a log mode, a log format, so we need to de-log this. And again if you look at the tutorial I went into great detail about how the automatic color corrector will automatically de-log Sony footage. But in this case we're going to do it manually and then we're going to get straight into the mask tool. So first of all let's bring up our scopes. There's a shortcut button here, toggle vector scope. And our scopes do in, in fact tell us that there is not enough contrast in this image. So let's go ahead and go to the primary color corrector, drag that down onto our clip, and let's double click the primary color correction filter. Then again all we need to do is scroll down to the curve, push our shadows down, and we're just going to drop them down close to zero. And just play with our midtones until you find a nice looking image. Um, you're delogging this yourself, right? So we're just doing this manually, doing it by eye, but we're also checking our scopes at the same time. So things are looking much better there. Let's add some saturation here. I'm going to go up to about 45. We've increased chrominance here, as you can see. But as I look at it, I can instantly see that her skin's too yellow. Uh, the blue slash gray top she's got on has a bit of yellow in it. So we need to um, actually have a look at the white balance and cool it off a little bit. So I'm just going to cool that down. And now skin's looking a lot more neutral. 
uh, which is nice. The whites in her eye are looking more neutral, so things are looking pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and press OK there. So we've um, corrected the D log, or we've corrected the S log 3 image. And just to show you before and after, I'll just delete that filter and go full screen. So there's um, the log image and there's our corrected image. So definitely not perfect, but it's a good starting point. So now let's go ahead and have a look at how else um, we can correct this image or start really grading this image using a mask. So let's go to Effect, um, go to Video Filters, and we're going to go to the Mask tool again, drop that onto our clip, double click that. And usually when I, um, what's called, create focus or relight someone's face, and I'll often do this actually, um, is just because I want to create even more focus, I want you to draw, be drawn right into the center of this frame. So because we're softening the mask so much, generally speaking, all we need to do is create an oval shape and just roughly place it around someone's face like that. And again, all we need to do is just click this double arrow, track forward, go back to the point where you started tracking and track backwards. And in real time, Edis is just, you know, do an amazing job no matter where she moves in the frame. It's just being tracked perfectly well. So this is so, so cool. And the next thing we need to do, though, is make sure we soften this mask. So let's enable softening and soften it by quite a lot. You, I want you to experiment with this. I mean, imagine we only softened it by 160 pixels. And if I go ahead just quickly and I'll just demonstrate, um, if I was to add some color correction in here, like make this pink, um, you can see that the edge of the mask isn't super soft. Like you never actually want to be able to see that we've added a mask. The whole point of a mask or creating focus is to literally do that. You don't want someone to notice the mask. So maybe with face masks, I often soften them maybe about 350 pixels on both sides of the mask itself. And um, this way it allows us to you know, never be seen basically. Okay, so the focus is just to bring focus to her face even more. And the way we're going to do that is just brighten it up just a smidge, add a little bit of sharpness, and maybe back off the background a little bit. So very similar to what we did in the previous shot. So instead of using a three-way color corrector, I'm going to go to the uh, filter dialog box. We're going to go to video filters and just scroll down to combine filters. This allows us to add more than one. Go ahead and press OK. Open the dialog box for that. And we're going to add a few filters in here. One, a YUV curve. Two, we're going to add some sharpness. And three, we're just going to add the three-way color corrector as well. So these three filters are a great way to um, add focus. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Um, you, you'll also be able to download a preset that sort of helps you save time. And all this can be done in like just a few clicks. But the YUV curve, if we open the properties of that, it's just going to allow us to um, control the brightness of everything inside that mask. And if we just cancel that, remember I did do that with um, the previous shot just using the three-way. So if we open the three-way color corrector, you can do that just using this contrast slider in the mids. And then going back to the contrast slider in the blacks, and just pushing those down, making sure our blacks are nice and contrasty here. So you can see if we split the, the difference before and after, I mean, that's done quite a lot. Um, and I just like to add a little bit of saturation as well. So I've just added a little bit of saturation there and go ahead and press OK. Um, so maybe in this case we don't need to use the YUV curve um, because we're getting enough contrast with the three-way. But it's nice to be able to have the ability just to go back in and say, actually, no, I'm just going to crush or bring down the mids just a little bit more or bring them up just a little bit more. It just gives you that little bit extra control. Let's go ahead and press OK there. Sharpness is definitely one I want to add here. Maybe about 12 pixels I'll sharpen that by. And I'm going to go ahead and press OK. So if we turn the filter on and off, Again, it's quite subtle, but we've just added an extra layer of focus to this image. And remember, this is being tracked, so no matter where she moves in the frame, we've got this beautiful, sharp, crisp looking face, and we're forced to look there and nowhere else, right? <laughs> so um, focus and composition is also helping with that, but I just want to show you the power of relighting or just adding emphasis to a shot. So let's go ahead and press OK there. We just play this back. Things are still happening in real time. This is amazing. And um, this is happening in 10-bit full resolution. So what if we wanted to take this shot a step further? What if we wanted to ch change the color of her eyes? Well, let's have a quick look at traditional ways of um, selecting a color in an image and changing that color. So for example, in previous tutorials, I've shown you that we can go Effect, Color Correction, Three-Way Color Corrector, and we can add that to our clip. Double clip the Three-Way Color Corrector. So instead of using the three-way color correction component of this filter, we're going to use the limiting component. Um, and basically, it, well, it's called a limit 
component, or it could be also be referred to as a qualifier. And again, I've gone through this in great detail in previous tutorials, make sure you check those out. But basically what it allows us to do is select a hue, saturation, and luminance range within an image. Um, so for example, if I selected blue, um, low saturation values down around the shadows and the midtones and turn on my key, you can see that that's exactly what I've selected. Uh, her eyes have blue in them, her top has blue in it, and the background has blue in it, so we've got this this color happening and then let's turn our key back on and you'll notice that um, it's only selecting the darker areas of blue if I go up to the right hand side it only selects the brighter areas of blue so we want to select the darker areas or sort of the midtones for her eyes and then the saturation values they're mostly all about the same saturation so as you can see we've run into a big problem here if I wanted to select her eyes only let's turn our key off it's going to be quite difficult because her eyes are the same color as her top are the same color as her background, roughly. Um, so now we've created a key, we can manipulate those parts of the image, um, even though I've just pulled a very terrible key here, it's very noisy, you can see that. But the point is we're going to have a lot of difficulty trying to separate this selection using um, traditional methods of selection. So in order to do what we want to do, we need to actually use a mask, track her eyes, and then create a qualification. So I'm going to show you how we do that, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do it very quickly. Let's go Effect, and let's go to Video Filters, go to the Mask, and we're going to use the Tracker component of the Mask. Let's double click the Mask, and you might think that we'd have to, you know, go in here, go to 80%, move this, and actually draw a perfect circle around her eye like this, and then maybe we're going to use this new magic tracking tool, and Edius is magically going to track her eye, which it will, um, and, you know, it's not doing a very good job there because we have some interference with the rain. So maybe um, in this case what we do is just make it a little bit bigger and then try and track it this way. But what I'm getting at here is that this is not the best way to create this effect. And uh, what I want to show you is a much easier way to do this. Um, and it's using multiple effects in one. So let's zoom this out to 40%. And all we're going to do is just draw a pair of sunglasses over her eyes, something like this, and rotate that. And just give Eddie something easy to track. So this should be good enough, something like that. So just keep it on her face, try not to go outside of the skin area there. And all we want to do is just track this shape now. So let's go ahead and track this. Just keeping an eye on the track and making sure that, you know, the mask doesn't fall off her face. So everything's looking pretty good so far. Good stuff. Let's go back to the original track point and reverse track to the beginning of the clip. All right, great. So now we've got this tracked data. This mask is sticking on her face. And what we want to do is find a nice frame here where we can see her eyes clearly. Then I want to go to the filter, the inside filter, open the filter dialog box, let's go ahead and instead of choosing three-way color corrector and using um, the qualifier, we're going to actually use the chrominance filter. So you can, um, again, you'll find more de detailed tutorials about the chrominance filter, but let's just briefly have a look at how it works. Go ahead and press OK, and let's open the chrominance filter and set up the properties for that. So now we have the mask in the background, the chrominance filter inside the mask, and what we want to do is turn our key on and use this eyedropper tool and click on her eye. So just click a couple of times. If we click on the white part of the eye or the skin, it's going to select different areas. But what we want to do is only create a key on the blue part of the eye itself. So what I've done here is essentially almost done that. So check it out. We've got this key. Now we can go and refine the key. So let's go to the color luminance tab. And let's increase the range of color we're looking at. Okay, it looks pretty good. And let's now go to the Effect tab, and we can actually blur this key. So where it says Shape Alpha 0, we can increase the blur amount. So check it out, now we've got this pretty awesome key. And you can do a much better job if you spend some time on that. Turn the key off. And now we can place a filter on the inside of that key. So let's open the filter dialog box, scroll down to the three-way color corrector, set that up, and now what we can do is change the color of her eyes, and no matter where she moves in the frame, her eyes will stay that color. So I'm going to make them a green color, and I'm going to go ahead and press OK, and check it out. Now her eyes are green, no matter where she moves in the frame, and we have this perfect key. We didn't have to manually track anything. It all happened automatically. This is so awesome. <laughs> So we've added focus to her face, you can see that here. We've changed the color of her eyes, you can see that here. 
and you know this is all happening very very quickly we've also delogged the image using that primary color corrector as well so this is happening so fast I urge you to download this clip have a play with this and um, you can change the color of her eyes to anything you like <laughs> Let's just quickly have a look at refining that key as well. We double click the mask tracking, go to the um, chrome and its filter, open the dialog box for that. If we show the key and have a look at the chroma uh, luminance range. So if you're having trouble um, with this, just go back to the eyedropper and just click on the eye again and try and find something, even if it's like this. And then what you can do is limit the base and the range, keeping in mind that you want to select most of the iris so this is no good let's go to the key color even and try making it more blue so that's looking better and the luminance range we want to look at brighter parts of the eye that's a much better key now because we don't want to actually color the iris of the eye do we so we've got a much better key now let's turn the key on and off and as you can see when we scrub through this frame she's got that vibrant green eye and it's just a perfect perfect key so let's go ahead open the dialog box again um, set up the three-way color corrector this time and we can make them more of an, a twilight sort of vampire color or something. <laughs> I don't know, whatever you want to do. But the point is you can even just enhance the blue or um, sometimes instead of changing the color I just like to go to the mid-tone contrast slider and just increase the, um, the eyes intensity that way. So now they're more of a gray steely blue but they look so intense. Let's go ahead press OK, press OK, press OK and you can see how the eyes have changed there and uh, let's just have a look at this full screen and look at what um, amazing power we have in EDIUS in real time, full resolution, no rendering. Uh, this is amazing that we can do this, it really is. We're de-stretching this um, anamorphic footage, we're adding focus to the face and we're doing this so quickly using EDIUS's new tracker. It's, it's just sick. <laughs> so let's have a look at speeding things up even more um, and using, say, a preset filter that I've created. And again, if you go to the blog, um, under the download section in the blog here at the top, uh, amongst all these clips, you'll also find hidden in here EDIUS 8.2 preset focus mask and EDIUS 8.2 preset log grade and focus mask. So I've sort of broken this filter set up um, and you can play with these. Keeping in mind that any sort of preset filter is going to require massaging, if you know what I mean. Not every clip is exposed the same or has the same white balance. Um, so let's go ahead and have a look at what I mean by that. Um, we'll grab another clip here. I'm just going to drag this down to the timeline. And this one's from uh, a film that I shot called Some Kind of Beautiful, written and directed by Rahul Prasad. Um, it was awesome to shoot. Actually got into Khan's short film corner, which is pretty cool. Um, so thanks for letting me use these clips in tutorials, Rahul. Really appreciate it. And uh, what we're going to do is just, uh, we're going to change our aspect ratio of our project back to 1080p. So I'm going to go to settings, project settings. You can do this on the fly at any time. Change current settings. And we're going to go 1920 by 1080. And just go ahead and press OK. So now my clip fits uh, much better. Anyway, so first thing we want to do is, well normally first thing we do is go effect, color correction, primary color corrector and correct the image. But what I wanted to show you guys are these presets. So again, if you go to the blog, download the preset, um, then it'll, it'll just download in its TPD, I think it is, uh, format. Then in your color correction tab, if you right click and go import, then all you need to do is find those filters that I've um, uploaded. And we're gonna, I'm gonna import this one first. And then I'm gonna import this one. And now I have these two presets that I've made that um, you can drop on any footage. So one of them obviously is the mask focus tool and the primary color correction. So we're going to use that one. I'm just going to drag that straight onto my clip. And instantly this shot looks so much better. And if we just have a look at before and after, that was just preset done, log footage graded. And obviously you need to go in and have a look at fixing stuff. Um, but before we do, let's just have a quick look at how the effect is broken down. So I've got a mask, a primary color correction, and a mask. So three filters in one. And let me just explain what each one is. So the bottom mask is literally just a vignette. So all we're doing is adding a very subtle vignette. You can turn that on and off. You can also double click it. And you can, say, lower the strength of the vignette. You can make it, say, you know, 18% if you like, or 100%. You can change the size of the vignette so it only you know, it does the very edge of the corners or you can make it a very strong vignette that's more of a focus window but basically this vignette is very flexible, it's very subtle and inside of the vignette you'll notice I've got combined filters so if we open that 
You've got, I've got a YUV curve in there, a smooth blur, three-way color corrector, and I've just tweaked a few settings in there. Keeping in mind that I like to keep all of my presets very um, subtle, that's the whole point. You don't want someone to say, hey, look at that vignette that you've added there. You just want the effect of the vignette. So here we've added a vignette, which is working pretty well for this shot. And um, the top mask is actually that focus mask that we were talking about. So I've created a focus mask, and it's specifically for faces. So um, in any shot that has a face in it, depending on how well or, or how it's been lit, I like to use a focus mask. So let's double click on the focus mask and have a look at its position for a start. So it'll never be in the right position. Let's move it in the right position. And it's probably too big, so let's shrink it down a little bit. And let's rotate it. And just put it on the part of the face that you want it to actually emphasize. Always checking the output monitor. And let's go ahead and track this shape. Remember, this is all built into that filter. It's tracking beautifully here. Love it. What an awesome job Edius does. And remember, if it's not perfect, if you just want to refine it a little bit, go to the part where you don't, you're not happy with it. Like here, for example, I'm not happy. I'd prefer that to be over here and a little bit larger. So you'll notice that Edius is actually tracked and compensated for what it thinks it should be doing, which is zooming in or resizing the mask as well. So what I'm doing in here is just manually refining my mask and things are looking awesome. And then we can always have a look at the properties of that inside filter. Let's turn it on and off. And it's a little bit too strong, isn't it? So let's go into the properties and have a look at what I've done here. I've got a YUV curve, a three-way color corrector, and a sharpness filter. I've also added a chrominance filter in there that selects skin tones. You can have a look at that yourself um, and an extra three-way color corrector. But in this case, I think I just want to have a look at my YUV curve. It's probably a little bit too strong. We could even just turn it off, have a look at the three-way color corrector, and that's brightening things up enough. So let's go ahead and press OK, press OK, and have a look at this image. And let's have a look at what that filter is doing. And again, it's not a perfect filter for every single clip. Every single clip needs different color correction. So the primary color corrector, if we have a look at that, I feel like my shadows aren't really dark enough. The contrast, it's a little bit overexposed even. So I'm going to go down to my curve that I've created, the one size fits all curve, but it never does, and just grab my shadow point and just pull them in a little bit. So that's looking much nicer now. And also my white balance. I'm just going to add a bit of magenta or subtract a little bit of green because I can see a little bit of green in the skin. That's looking much nicer as well. And maybe even add a little bit more saturation. So awesome. So as you can see, a simple filter, let me just duplicate this clip, delete the filters and have a look. A preset filter can very quickly um, add a tracking mask, add focus to a face and you know quickly fix a log image. Let's uh, have a look at one more example before we wrap this up. Here's another shot you can download from the blog. And uh, this is for a film written and directed by Ryan Thomas. It's called Next Door's Mail, which will be released soon. It's super exciting. So what we're going to do is go to Effects, and we're going to have a look at the presets that I created. So let's drag this onto our log image. And instantly, things are looking pretty good. Maybe the white balance is a little warm, but let's go ahead and have a look at our preset. So maybe the first thing we want to do is go to the focus mask, make sure that's in the right place, shrink it down a little bit. And uh, let's go ahead and have a look at tracking this. Now, one thing I haven't gotten into with the tracker is that you can actually tell the tracker to ignore scale and rotation. Because really, I mean, this shot, he doesn't move forward and back so much. It's really just a matter of position. Um, and he doesn't tilt his head left or right so much either. So we don't need to worry about um, tracking the scale or rotation. Let's just track the position only. And um, if you're having trouble tracking a certain shape, and it, you know the, the mask is doing weird things, just experiment with turning these on and off before you make the track. So now I'm going to track this forward, just keeping an eye on my mask over here on the left. Beautiful, amazing. Love this feature. <laughs> just makes things so much easier and actually makes it more fun as well. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so we might need to manipulate the mask or even fade the mask in and out when he's over to the left-hand corner there. And once that tracking's done, let's scroll back to where we started the track and let's just track backwards the rest of the frame. Always just keeping an eye on the tracking, see how it's doing. 
All right. So now what we can do is just have a look at what this filter is doing so we can turn it on and off. And you can see it's doing a hell of a lot. This is looking really awesome. It's almost like we've added an extra light in here um, and you can't really see that, that there's a mask there, right? You can, unless you're actually looking for turning it on and off, no one would ever know. It just looks like it's really well lit, nicely color graded, right? This is the whole point of this mask. It's just awesome. So what if we wanted to not have the mask on at all until he faced us? Well, that way we can just animate the strength properties ourselves. So you'll see here there's an inside and an outside property for the mask. Well, what we want to do is animate the inside property because look, this is the inside filter here. So let's go to the part where we want the mask to be full strength, which is probably about there. And let's add a keyframe for inside and click keyframe. So currently the keyframe's strength is 100% at this point. Now if we move the cursor back to about here, or maybe even about here, this is where I want the filter strength to be zero. So we've already enabled automatic keyframes, so we don't actually have to add one now. All we need to do is change the value. So if I change the value down to zero, now there is no effect. This mask is having no effect at this particular point in time. But as we press play, it animates on and now it's full strength. But no one should ever notice that, right? And you can always just pull these keyframes apart a little bit. And that's just going to make that animation a little more subtle. And again, let's go to the part where he turns away. So maybe we want the filter to start fading off about here. So I'm going to add a keyframe here, which represents 100%. So the difference between this keyframe and this keyframe is nothing. So there is no animation here. But from this keyframe to here, I want the animation to be zero. So let's put that to zero. And let's just watch that back and see if we can... Yeah, maybe just stretch that out a little bit. And no one would ever know that we animated that on and off. Because what's the point of creating focus um, to some the back of someone's head or the side of someone's face? I mean, we really only want to create focus in the middle here. So let's go ahead and press OK. Now we've refined that mask, which is awesome. We've got our automatic color correction here. And we've also got a vignette, which we can turn on and off or we can modify. Let's just leave it off for now. And let's have a look at the primary color correction properties. And I feel like I'm just going to cool this off even more. So we'll just go to the left-hand side, cool it off a little bit more. It's looking a little bit more neutral. And I think everything else is looking pretty good. I might just add a little bit more contrast here. And I think we're looking pretty good. So there's the automatic um, tool, <laughs> I guess the preset tool, that's going to get from a log image, which looks like this, to this with a tracked focus mask very, very quickly. And obviously I'm just teaching you how to do this, so I'm walking through it quite slowly. But when you get used to this stuff, I mean, Edis has is, is always been so fast, but now it's even faster. It's just awesome. Um, so if you create your own preset, you can always export a preset filter as well. So for example, if we were grading this shot and we go to effect and we drag my filter on top of there, and let's just go to the mask, lower uh, its properties a little bit, Go to the primary color corrector, lower exposure, and just fix this up a little bit, right? So imagine that this is something that you find is closer to your base color correction that you often do. You can just highlight all of these, right click, save as current user preset. So you can create your own presets, you can upload your own presets. Um, yeah, it's just a great way to be able to share um, your creative looks and things like that. So if you're creating film looks using that primary color corrector, share them at Idiot's World, get them out there. Um, this is an awesome time for EDIUS users. There's some really exciting things coming. And I'm really excited to be sharing this stuff with you. That mask, the tracker, it's just sick. <laughs> and when um, you know some refinements come to that primary color corrector as well, you know there's some, some great things happening for EDIUS. Remember, we're always working in 10-bit and full resolution, but now we can actually change that on the fly if we are working with raw footage or something like that in the laptop. We have the ability to you know, preview in 1 8th resolution. Um, but yeah, there's so much flexibility and so many more awesome things coming for Edius. Thanks for staying tuned for so long. And uh, yeah, make sure you visit Edius World, check out the blog, download some footage, and enjoy. My name's Matt, thanks very much. 
Actually, just real quick before we go, I want to show you one more idea or one more sort of method of using the tracker and how it can be useful um, in the exact opposite way that we've been doing. So what we've been doing typically is creating focus. But now what I want to actually do is create defocus. And this can be quite useful um, in a newsroom environment, for example, when you need to hide the identity of someone. Um, and we're going to do that right now. I'm probably going to use this clip here. So say we needed to hide the identity of Kim Denon here, an amazing actress who also worked on Some Kind of Beautiful. And uh, what we're going to do is just add an in point and out point and drop this clip down on the timeline. And we're going to go effects. We're going to go to my um, preset color corrector effect and just drop that on. And instantly things are looking pretty good. A little overexposed maybe. Let's go to the, the focusing mask. And normally what we do is reposition this, resize it, rotate it a little bit, and we can just start tracking away. And as you can see, Eddie's is doing a pretty good job, but not the best job. It sort of fell off here, and I'm going to show you some tips on how to, how to fix that. But my point is, let me just undo that, is that we don't actually want to create focus here. We want to create defocus. Um, and also, I just wanted to show you that um, this filter doesn't actually fit every single clip. This is clearly way overexposed. Let's go ahead and delete that focus mask, and let's have a look at the primary color correction. We can also just go up to the exposure up here and just drop exposure and check it out image is looking much nicer. Let's also go down to our contrast and just push out mids down a little bit more and just add a little bit more saturation, maybe 55. So things are looking pretty good. Maybe I'm going to cool my image off just another percent. All right, so things are looking much better. And if we just duplicate that layer, delete the filters, you can see, um, you know, it's working very well. We can also get rid of our vignette just for the sake of this uh, demonstration. So what we're trying to do now is hide Kim's identity and um, to do that, we need to track her face using the tracker. So let's go ahead to Effects, Video Effects, Mask, and let's add the mask to this. Go ahead and draw a circle. Now, when you're creating a mask and you want to track an object, um, there's a few things you need to keep in mind or think about, right? So the tracker is going to have an easier job if it has a high contrast image all right, so it actually does better if you do the primary color correction first than if you put the mask on first. It's going to track better now because the features it's tracking have been enhanced. All right, so the edge and the difference between the focus and the background, this mask is going to be looking inside, or the track is going to be looking inside this mask, looking for features that stay the same, and it's trying to, it's going to try and keep this shape on those features. So if we, for example, created a mask like this, okay maybe like this, it only has this piece of hair and this eye to track. So let's go ahead and track and see what happens. And it's doing a pretty damn good job, right? And Edis's tracking tool does do a very good job, it's excellent. But what I'm saying is that sometimes you're going to run into issues where the tracker doesn't do a good job, and sometimes that's just down to user error, dare I say. Um, just because you've placed the tracker in the wrong position, or you've made it too small, or you've made it too big, so what I want you to do is experiment with that. What I'm going to do now is make the size of this uh, window much bigger. And now it's going to include uh, the V in her neck as well. So let's go ahead and track this and see how we go. And you'll notice the size of the mask got quite a lot bigger as she leant in there. And it's doing okay, but it's not doing the best. We can always refine this, remember, it's pretty easy to refine. But I just want you to experiment with the size of the mask, the position of the mask, and where you start tracking from also. So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a shot here. I'm going to place the mask over Kim's face like this. And what I'm going to do is go to the tracking options and say do not incorporate scale into this. Right? And I'm also going to just straighten it up and say, do not incorporate rotation. Let's go ahead and start tracking. So this is doing much better for what we need. Much better. See how it's not rotating, she tilts her head. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. It's beautiful that we can change that. Let's go back to the first tracking point and reverse track. See how we go when she gets up. Not too bad, needs a little bit of refinement there. Notice how the size of the mask didn't change this time. Sometimes I like to be able to do that myself because I find I'll do a better job. Um, so now we've all, all automatically got keyframes enabled. I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit and I'm just going to rotate it. 
keeping in mind that I'm going to have to derotate it in a minute. So here she comes in here. I'm just going to push that over here. She comes to sit down. You know, most of the hard work is done. All I'm doing is just refining this track. Okay. Awesome. So now I've got this awesomely tracked mask very quick. What we want to do instead of adding focus inside of this mask is we want to add a mosaic. And um, to do that, it's just the same principle. But before we add a filter, let's just soften the edge of the mask. And with a mosaic, it might look weird if we softened it by a lot, because this is the instance where you actually do want to see the edge of the mask, I guess. So maybe let's just soften this by 100 pixels. And let's go filter, open the filter dialog box, and we're looking for mosaic. Go ahead and press OK, and instantly um, mosaic is happening inside of that mask, no matter where she moves. Um, so we can increase the amount of mosaic that we see. Um, all we need to do is just go to the properties, set up the filter and increase the mosaic. So now we've got this awesome mosaic filter. Go ahead and press OK. And no matter where Kim moves, um, you can see how quickly and accurately that mosaic is happening. We probably didn't even need to refine that mask, um, but you can see that, yeah, it works very well. It works very well for um, car number plates, for signs that need to be blocked out, and obviously for people's faces. It's such an awesome tool, and I'm, <laughs> as you can tell, I am super excited about it. But yeah, so that does wrap it up, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in for so long. I know these are long tutorials, and I do ramble a lot, but I just want to get a lot of information across, and also uh, my enthusiasm about, you know, where Edis is going and how, you know, there's a lot of awesome stuff happening in the post-production world for video and in um, the camera equipment and lighting world as well. So, you know, it's good to embrace all this new technology and really understand how it works and get the most from your software. Um, again, I love Edius. Everyone knows I love Edius. I just love it because of it. it's so fast. And, you know, it, I, I have a very short attention span. <laughs> if I have an idea, I just want to be able to see it very quickly. And with Edius, I have that power. And, and things are just happening quicker now. The ability of this preset and these masks and tracking and things like that and that primary color corrector, it means that I can correct images so fast, so quickly. Effect, I can just go to my MTS grade log, just drop that on, and bang. The shot's pretty much done. Go to my exposure, drop it down a little bit, add a little bit more contrast here, maybe warm it up a smidge, add a bit more pink, go ahead and press OK. And you know, I've got my focus here. I can add my focus and move it exactly where it needs to be. I can lower the strength of it. And you know, things just happen so much quicker um, than the old days with Edius. And it's just awesome. And I urge you to play with these new tools and um, definitely check out Edius World. Um, there's heaps of tutorials on there, a lot of input from a lot of great guys in the industry. And make sure you check out my blog as well. Download that footage, download the presets. Anyway, guys, have fun. My name's Matt. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Oh, shit. You thought I was done. I thought I was done. But there's one more thing. Stick around for five minutes, I promise. This will be well worth it. Uh, it blew my mind. I was just playing with this footage, playing with the mask tool, and I came up with this awesome idea, and it actually works. So check this shit out. So um, I shouldn't be swearing, but here we go. Here we got the clip, and uh, you know we've de-stretched it like before. We've done a primary color correction. All good. I'm not going to change the color of the eyes, but what I am going to do is um, I'm going to pretend to be a horrible, horrible person. <laughs> I'm going to be pretend to be um, maybe an agency, and they're looking at this shot of Simone, who has a beautiful face and beautiful skin, and they're like you know what, we want to get rid of these two little marks here, these two little bumps. We, we don't want them. We can't have them for the campaign. Get rid of them. And you're thinking to yourself, hold on a second, this isn't Photoshop. We can't just, you know, use the healing tool. Um, but check this out. Maybe we can. So what I want you to do is go to Effect, and then we're going to go to Mask, and we're going to use the Tracker. So we'll draw a simple shape around the face, and we're going to use points on the face that do not move. For example, the distance between her eyes and her nose stays the same throughout this entire clip, and that's exactly what we want. So we're going to track this shot, and we're going to track it forward. We can always turn the primary color corrector off in the background to give us better performance as we track. And now I'm just going to go to the beginning of our track and reverse track, so we've done this before. But the point is, we're getting this perfectly rock-solid track, okay? And what we're going to do is use that tracking information um, to our advantage. So what we're going to do now is uh, we can turn our primary color corrector back on. And what we can do is untick automatic keyframes for shape and transform. And what that allows us to do is reposition this shape without adding keyframes. 
So what we want to do is actually zoom this in a little bit so we can see in the viewfinder. And um, what we're doing is we're looking for a small piece of um, skin. <laughs> doesn't sound very nice, does it? A small piece of skin that doesn't have um, two little bumps on it. And we're going to put that here like this, maybe. Something like that. And uh, what we're going to do is soften the edge of that uh, mask by maybe 50 pixels. And then we're going to lower the opacity of everything outside of that mask. So we'll go to the opacity on the outside, lower it to zero. And as you can see, we've created this little piece of skin here. Let's soften it by less, maybe by 30 pixels. And let's increase the size of it as well. And if we uncheck the um, preserve aspect ratio for the scale, we can stretch it out to something like this. And basically what we've done now is we've created a piece of skin, a patch, that we're going to place over the top of this piece of skin. So we go ahead and press OK. Now, we've got one single video layer here, we need two. So let's duplicate this layer, put that on top. On the bottom layer we don't need that mask anymore, that piece of skin, but on the top layer we do. So on the top layer, if we turn the bottom layer off, you can see that what we've done is created a piece of skin. On the bottom layer, we've just got our normal um, shot. So as we play back and forth, nothing seems to have changed, and that makes perfect sense, because all we've got is a duplicate layer on top, top layer being a small piece of skin. So what we need to do now is move that piece of skin over the top of this piece of skin. Sound pretty simple? Normally you would think, let's go to the Layout tool. If we do that, though, and we try and move this piece of skin, you'll see we run into some weird problems. And that's because the Layouting tool um, works independently of the rest of these filter stacks. So Fortunately, there's another filter within EDIUS that allows us to do this. We go Effect, we go to Video Filters, we go all the way down to the bottom and choose Transform. This was newly added a couple of versions ago. Add Transform to the top layer. And basically what Transform is is exactly the same thing as the Layout tool, but just in another instance, and it's working after the stack of filters. So if we double-click the Transform filter, now we can move that piece of skin around, and you can see I've just repositioned it right now over the top of the two little bumps. We'll go ahead and press OK and check this out in full screen in real time. No more bumps. We just used a healing tool within EDIUS. How awesome is this? In real time, full resolution, this is epic. And uh, you know what, you could take this a step further. Um, I don't really suggest doing this, uh, <laughs> but maybe you could try something like this. If you wanted to get real creative, let's go ahead and zoom in again. We're still using that tracking data, the same tracking data from before. Let's grab our shape, move it onto the eye, and now we're going to edit the shape. And we're going to pull our Bezier points around the eye like this, and manipulate the handles. And uh, you know what, just to be a smart ass to the client and say, you, I'm, I'm glad you're happy with the skin now. Um, I just made this other little alteration. I was just wondering what you think. Let's go ahead and press OK. And again, go Effect, Transform, drop that on the top layer. And uh, let's just rotate this like so. And maybe move it up here. And um, let's just go ahead and increase the size of it as well. Uh, maybe not let it ro rotate it. Let's leave it as is. But what we're going to do is give Simone a little third eye here. <laughs> Something like this. We may have to um, muck around with the mask a little bit. Let's go back to the mask and soften it by... Oh, let's just soften the outside of the mask this time. So now we've got three eyes looking pretty cool. Let's just go back to the transform properties, move it up a smidge, and increase the size a little bit as well. But check this out. If we go full screen and have a look at this... Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't show that to the client, but and the mask isn't perfect, that tracking information isn't perfect, but if you can find something in the frame that is constant throughout the whole thing, you will get a perfect track and you will be able to do things like this. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd quickly drop that one in. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>